Hi, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back. We're here with lesson two. I'm happy that you're watching. So 4.2 food chains. Textbook, page 54. So um, we begin with some keywords. Get your notebook, get a pen, start writing up these keywords because these are very important so you understand the rest of the lesson. So we'll start with one word herbivore. A herbivore is an animal that only eats plants. Can you think of an example? Well, I can. Maybe a rabbit or a panda. Carnivore. A carnivore is an animal that eats other animals. So he eats meat. It's a meat eater. Now meat is, could also be insects. So if a bird eats an insect, that's also considered meat. But also the cheetah is a carnivore because it eats the gazelle. The gazelle is his meat. Predator. A predator is a carnivore that hunts other animals for food. So the other animals are then called prey. So the Dutch translation of predator is roofdier. And we already talked about prey. Prey are animals, usually herbivores, poor herbivores, that are hunted by the predator. So prey in Dutch is prooi. And then finally we have scavenger. Scavenger is an animal that eats dead animals. Think of vultures, aschigeren. So they clean up all the dead animals. So let's talk about producers and consumers. Producers and consumers. Well, what's that all about? First of all, plants are what we call producers. Why? Because they produce meaning they make their own food using energy from the sun. So that means that they don't really eat sunlight, but they use the energy from the sun and they make food from that energy and with that energy inside their bodies. So they use the energy from the sun to make their food. So that is why they call producers. And plants are the only ones that can do this. Then we have herbivores that consume or eat the plants because those herbivores, those animals, cannot make their own food from the sun, so they have to eat plants. So the plants make food inside their own cells from the sunlight, but part of that food is then also used as food for the animals when the animals eat the plants. So the Animals that eat the plants are called consumers. Now herbivores can be consumers, but uh, carnivores can also be consumers because if they eat the herbivores, they also consume, right? They consume the herbivores. So plants are producers, everybody else is a consumer. Now, we talk about something called biomass. Biomass is an amount of material uh, in a plant or an animal. So, for instance, if you look at a panda, it eats a lot of bamboo, and all that bamboo is the biomass. And that energy from that bamboo, from those plants, get into the body of the panda, and that body grows. So that biomass gets more and more of the animal's body. So now the biomass is in the animal, right? So it's what we call energy in the form of a plant, amount of plants, and that energy goes into the body of a panda, and that is an amount of the body of the panda. So we can talk about something called food chains. Now here you see a nice food chain, and you can see it starts with a producer. The producer is a tree, and it is consumed or eaten by this consumer, this herbivore, the giraffe. But the giraffe is also consumed or eaten by the lion. So the lion is also a consumer. So always a food chain begins with a producer. 
By the way, food chain in Dutch means voedselketen. So a food chain begins with a producer. So there's always a plant as the first starter in a food chain. Now a producer is eaten by a consumer and consumers can be eaten by other consumers. Now you can see arrows between all of these organisms and that means that the energy flows through. So that means the energy from the sunlight comes into the tree and the tree makes food. Then that energy goes into the giraffe when the giraffe eats the tree. And when the lion eats a giraffe, that energy then goes into the lion. So that is what the arrows are about. So the arrows go with the flow of energy through the chain. So let's move on to our first assignment. The first assignment is you're going to make or look at a food chain in worksheet 4.2.1. And remember, you can see them in Magister and you can print all these worksheets out and then work on them. And the idea here is to put the right words at the right area of the food chain. So I'll get back with you with the answer. We'll move on to the next slide. Now, here we have another food chain and you can see a little bit more in here. We see the sunshine, there's energy, that energy gets into the producer, the plant, and then it gets into the consumer, to another consumer, and then it goes to something called a decomposer, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so the energy comes from the sun, it's used by plants to produce food. When the consumer eats the plant, the energy flows into this consumer. Then, what is this decomposer about? Now, a decomposer always sits at the end of a food chain. Remember, a producer sits in the beginning, a decomposer at the end. Yeah, and you do see the sun, but the sun is not an organism, right? So we don't, I just put the sun in here to make sure that you understand how the energy goes. But usually, what we normally do is a food chain starts with a plant. Now, it ends with a decomposer. What does it do? It eats the waste and the dead bodies of the producers and the consumers. So when a plant dies, or when one of these other animals die, or when they make waste, like when they poop, then the decomposer gets rid of all that waste. So he is always at the end of the food chain. Now, here we see something else. This is called a food web. Think of a spider web. Now, many animals, they eat more than one type of animal. I mean, you don't always eat chicken every day, all day, only chicken, right? You like to eat other food. And if you're vegetarian, you know, you don't eat chicken at all. But anyway, that's another story. Anyway, most animals are just like you and they don't like to eat just one animal. So. That means that they are part of many food chains, which together work as a big food web. So you can see here, for instance, um, that the giraffe is eaten by the lion, but the zebra is also eaten by the lion. And the elephant can also be eaten by a lion. You know, they need a lot of lions to kill an elephant, but it happens. But poor elephant can also be eaten when it, uh, you know, when it is not very lucky, it can get eaten by hyenas. So elephants could be food for lions and hyenas. Zebras can be food for hyenas and lions and also for this guy, the cheetah. So you can see that now we go down here at the bottom, you can see all the producers. Remember, the producers are always at the beginning. So we have here some plants, and the plants are eaten by all the different herbivores, and then the carnivores are all up here. So this is called a food web. I'm sure you can see many more food chains. Go ahead and pause this video and see if you can trace with your finger some really nice food chains, and then you have a good idea of what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so now there's a second assignment for you, another worksheet, worksheet 4.2.2. And I would like you to uh, look at all these cards, uh, cut them out, and see if you can make food chains. And uh, you may want to make some pictures of every different food chain, and then uh, mix all the cards back up, and then make another food chain, make another picture, so you can upload that as an assignment into Magister. Um, there's also a worksheet 4.2.3. In here, you're going to answer some questions about the food web that you see here. And it's called a fragile web. Now, a fragile web means that it is uh, very vulnerable, breakbaar, gevoelig, het kan kapot gaan. So that is usually the case. Can you imagine when you see an actual spider web? and you um, touch the spider web and you break one little part of it, then the whole spider web can all of a sudden just collapse. Well, that happens too in food webs. If some animals are killed too much, then all the other animals that need to eat that animal, that depend on that animal, have not enough food anymore. And so, the animals at the top will also die. And that means it's fragile. And we as humans should be very careful what we do to nature, that we do not destroy food chains and food webs. Because a little thing that we change can have a very bad result for all these animals. Anyway, going back, going on, I mean, to uh, worksheet 4.2.4, and uh, here we have another really nice uh, example of a fragile Antarctic web. So go ahead and study that. And now you are going to have to draw your own food web. So try your best. You don't really have to draw the pictures, but just write down the words and then make a picture of your creation. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Okay, and then there are the assignments. Uh, in your textbook on page 55, you're going to do um, questions 1 till 9 in your uh, notebook. So write them down in your notebook, make a picture. And then uh, in your workbook, you're going to do uh, page 27, assignments 1, 2, and 3. And you can start with the workbook first. You can start with the textbook first. Just go ahead and do that. Okay, so thank you for watching again. And we'll see each other again for lesson 3. Bye.